today. If you are looking for a non-fiction book to read, this Lewis Hine Looking at the Stars is brilliant. It is about um, a boy with an incurable illness and what he learns from that and through it. So I'm going to read to you the opening chapter. My name's Lewis, Lewis Hine, I'm 17. I spend a lot of time sitting in my room playing Xbox games and watching films and I can't leave the house without a responsible adult, usually my mum. I live just outside Portsmouth in a place called Lee Park. It's the biggest council estate in the UK and if you Google it, it comes up as one of the worst places to live in the whole of England. Not long ago, my little sister Jessica and I were walking back from the co-op when she nudged my arm. Hey Lewis, look at that, she said. I turned. This bunch of little kids was coming towards us, holding a plank of wood between them. They could only have been about eight years old, but the plank they were waving at us had nails sticking out of it. Hey, they shouted at us. Hey, you. Then they started coming towards us. We're in trouble, I said to Jess. We're only about 15 metres from home, but the thing is, I can't run. I've got epilepsy, and every time I have a seizure, my muscles get weaker. I have a lot of seizures. Anything between 30 and 50 a week is normal. So there's no strength left in my legs. Half the time I'm in a wheelchair. Don't worry, Jess told me, grabbing my hand. She pulled me over the road and we made it across just before a white van drove past. That stopped the kids and gave us time to duck into our local corner shop. We went down the back aisle where all the cleaning stuff is and hovered about until we were sure the kids were gone. The bloke who runs the shop probably thought we were nicking something. There's a lot of shoplifting around here and there had been a nasty incident once when he suspected me. I'd gone in to buy some chocolate and when I picked the bar up, my hand clamped. That's an epi epilepsy thing too. So I had to balance it against my body. I was just trying to make sure that I didn't drop it, but the shop owner assumed I was trying to put the bar back in my pocket. There are a lot of misunderstandings when you're disabled. And although I don't look disabled, unless I'm in my wheelchair, I am. All in all, I've had 13 life-saving brain surgeries so far, which means my brain looks like Swiss cheese. All sorts of stuff has fallen through the holes, like my memory trigger and whatever it is that tells you when you need a wee. The epilepsy started when I was six, but I was diagnosed with a brain tumour and hydrocephalus, or water on the brain, when I was about 17 months old. The surgeons managed to remove the tumour, but they couldn't cure the hydrocephalus. They'd put a kind of tap in my skull for that. They call it a shunt. I go to the local college. I'm still doing maths and English because I failed my GCSEs. And I'm also doing a foundation learning course that includes a module called horticulture. That's gardening, basically. I hate gardening. But the only other option was sports. And as you probably guessed, sport isn't exactly my strong point. It's only a one-year course, and I don't know if I'll pass anyway. It doesn't matter, though, because I don't go to college for the education. I go because that's what normal kids do, and so much of my life is not normal. But I really enjoy the bits that are, even if it means having to pretend to be massively into plants. So college is okay, and I actually like living in Lee Park. Despite the odd wild kid, our neighbours are nice. People look out for each other. It's been home to me, Jess, my older sister, Chloe, my mum, Emma, and our two dogs, George and Poppy, since I was a baby. Poppy's a Yorkshire Terrier, and so is George, officially. But we suspect he might actually be half wolf. He doesn't bark, he howls. So in lots of ways, I'm a pretty normal teenager. I'm probably not someone you'd think would ever be asked to write a book, but I was. A woman called me saying she was a literary agent and asked me to meet her. We had lunch in a cool burger bar in London and she talked about a hardback book with my face on the cover and my story inside. If that sounds mad to you, it sounded completely insane to me. For a start, I can hardly write because the muscles in my hands are too weak. But she'd seen a Facebook video about my life. I'd posted it on the 17th of March 2017 for my 16th birthday and it went viral. She said I had a story to tell. And it turns out that you can do a book into a digital tape recorder. So I said yes. And I said yes for the same reason that I made the video. Because I don't believe that disability is a bad thing. The bad thing is keeping silent about it. My life is a bit of a challenge. I'd be lying if I said I never mind missing out on something because I've had yet another seizure. Or that it doesn't bother me when someone asks me for the millionth time why I have a giant scar in the shape of a candy cane on the side of my head. It's where the surgeons cut through my skull to fit the shunt that drains excess fluid out of my brain. But the truth is, I think I'm lucky. When you're told you might die at any moment, every day feels special. And it certainly means that we Hines don't sweat the small stuff. I did all the interviews for the book, book sitting in a camping chair in the sitting room. Because 
the sofa Mum had ordered was six weeks late. Mum finally called the company on the 17th of December. We have friends and family coming over for Christmas, she explained. I don't think Nan and Grandad would be very comfortable on fold-out chairs, and she laughed. The delivery man said, we're dealing with this very well. I'd be losing it by now if it was me. Mum just shrugged and replied, well, compared to what we face every day, the missing sofa is not really top priority. She's right. Living with illness changes your perspective on life, and I think that's a good thing. My physical and mental challenges also mean I understand how isolating disability can be, especially for children and young people who miss so much school that they can't make friends. That's what led me to launch in my charity, Friend Finder. And since that day in October 2015, Friend Finder has taken me on the most brilliant journey. I've met so many super generous people who supported the charity by donating money and time and lots of incredibly strong people who are facing challenges much tougher than mine and I've done some really amazing things like met Prince William and Kate and go, on the Royal Albert, go to Royal Albert Hall to see the UK premiere of Star Wars but best of all I've been given the chance to tell my story and show the world that while illness and disability might define the length of your life they don't have to define how you live it. It's okay to be disabled. In fact, disabled people make the world more colourful. We can light up a room with our stories. I've written this book because I want everyone to know that by supporting each other, we can all achieve what we want to achieve. When we were trying to come up with a title, someone read me the quote. Quote, we are all in the gutter, but some of us are looking at the stars. It's by the famous writer Oscar Wilde. I thought it was really cool. My take on it is that no matter what stuff we have to deal with, we just need to think big and remember to look at the stars. I hope you enjoyed reading my story as much as I've enjoyed living it so far. So, check it out. Lewis Hine looking at the stars.